Hello, this is Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. All week we've been on chapter 9, 1 Corinthians. Now, it's been awesome. It's been beautiful. Praise God. Lots of lessons, lots of things to learn from, from what Paul said. Now, we are in verse 23. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today with your truth. Oh, we let your word fill our mouth and our heart. And we receive our daily bread, Lord. Thank you. You will guide us into every truth that we need today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now then, now 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse mm, 24. Now, let, let me read from verse 23. It says, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Then verse 24 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize? Everybody's running, but someone comes first. Now, I want you to get Paul's thinking. Now, now you understand why he was saying all these things he was saying. He said, one person comes first. And then he said, so run that you may obtain. When you are on a race, it is useless to say, ah, I don't know, ah, I know the person on lane one, ah, that one is uh, Usain Bolt. The person on lane two, ah, Magic Johnson. The person on lane three, hey, I don't have any hope. Ah, ah let me just run, Sha. <laughs> no! He said, run! That you may obtain, I must get the prize. I must get it. Praise God. I aim for that. I must get that prize. All right. So, so when they call first, second, third, and the rest, I don't want to be amongst the rest. Praise God. That's what Paul is saying. Don't be amongst the rest. Get the prize. Thank you, Jesus. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Did you see that? Anyone who's, who's, who's striving for mastery, when, when someone says, hey, I want to be the first, the Bible says he's temperate, temperate in all things. In other words, now you, you, it's just like you have some friends who, who have set their hearts, or you are like that, so you've set your heart for a goal. See, when, when your friends call, oh, let's, let's, let's go partying, let's go this, let's go that. Uh, not now, please, not now. Oh, but ah, you followed us yesterday now. Yeah, well, let's go today. Come on, there's a lot to do. Not now, please. I, I've got something to do. It's temperate. In all things, it's temperate. See, he has zeal, but his zeal is moderated, right? Thank you, Jesus. Watch. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. Did you see that? Imagine the athlete. He doesn't eat like you. He doesn't sleep like you. He wakes up early, goes for his practice. You, you, you wake up and you're looking for what to do. He wakes up, the first thing he thinks about is, I've got to run this meter. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And what's he thinking? He said, because I've got to win that next prize. That's his thinking. And here they say, oh, come, come follow me out for jogging. Say, ah, please, 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 I'm tired, man, I'm tired, I'm tired. You're not running for something. Are you going to be in the same race? Come on. It's the same thing with the gospel. Why are you preaching the gospel? Are you preaching the gospel to obtain the prize? Or are you preaching the gospel to be among the rest? Now, how, how do I know I will obtain the prize? When you are accurate with what God wants you to do especially in knowledge. You see, it is the people who know the Lord Jesus Christ that will sit together with him. Not the people who do all the mighty works in court. Of course, if you know him, you will do mighty works. See, but you see, mighty works is not how you use, to, how you judge that he is close to you. That's why Jesus said, on that day, many will come to me and say, didn't we do all these mighty works in your name? And I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I, ne ne I never knew you. That is big. <laughs> See? So you don't use mighty works to judge. You use 
he, he had knowledge of him. And when I say your knowledge of him, I'm not talking about Christ visited me 10 years ago, Jesus visited me two years ago, he visited me 20 years ago. That's not what I'm talking about. The updated knowledge. Today, what has he said to you? What, what is he revealing to you today? It is, it is what you know today that will bring life for you today. It's not what you know knew five years ago that will give you life today. No, 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 no. You need to keep knowing and hearing him and hearing him and hearing him. Praise God. That's why the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing what? The voice of God. See, so you see, remember, it says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God, and then faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. So now you see, you understand what I, what I, what I mean by if you don't hear the voice of God, you're not a Christian. Why? Because you can't please God. Why can't I please God? Because you can't have faith. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. Okay. So I don't hear God. So you can't have faith. It's as simple as that. Uh, but but I, I believe, you believe. Yes, that is not faith. Faith is a commitment. That's why Hebrews tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance. I, I, I'm believing that God will heal me. It's not faith. Uh, but the word of God says it's not faith. It is faith to the one who spoke it because he heard it. But it's not faith to you. Really? Yes. Now, you read that, and what goes through your mind is not faith, it's hope. But you see how it works. When you see that, and then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, did you say this to Isaiah? Did you say this to Jeremiah? Did you say this to Peter, Lord? I want to know, Lord, truly. And then you hear the voice of the Lord say, Yes. I gave them my word as I am giving you my word now. That by my stripes ye were healed. Hallelujah. Now the moment that comes to you, faith has come. Praise God. And you say, Lord, wow, I am healed. Faith. Why are you saying I'm healed? Oh, the Lord spoke to me. I have read it in the scripture and I was asking the Lord concerning and then the word of the Lord came to me. Now, this is the reason we read about these people in the Bible and we are wondering, is it the same God that they were serving? Yes, it's the same God. This is the difference. They had a relationship with God that you don't. So what relationship? They could hear God speak to them. Question, did God stop speaking? After the Bible days, no, he's still the same God till this day. He's still speaking to people till this day. And then they are doing mighty works till this day. Praise God. That's where it lies. Let's finish this up. Now it says, they run to receive an incorruptible crown. A corruptible crown, but we, an incorruptible crown. It says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beated the air. No, you know, you ain't beating, you say you're fighting. But you just, mm, mm, mm. why? There's no accuracy, accuracy in knowledge in the things that you know. No accuracy. For example, I shared concerning tithes to you. That's the accuracy of God's word. Accuracy of God. Each time I tithe, I say the blessing. Uh, it works. That's all I can tell you. It works. So he says, I don't want to run uncertainly. Uncertainly. I don't just want to. Ah, ah, I've tried. I want to be sure I'm going for that prize and I'll win it. Praise God. So he says, I don't fight as one who's beating about the air. You know. I want to be able to give my punches right. And each punch should gain a point. You know, in boxing, each punch I release, each time I stretch my hand, I should get a point. Praise God. Then he says, but I keep my body under. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. See, this is very, very possible. You're preaching healing to others. And yet you die of sickness. You have laid hands on many people and they got healed. And yet you died of sickness. Why? 
you were not deliberate in your knowledge. You weren't. You, you love to do ministry, see, but you were not growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will tell people about healing, but you had no testimony, see. What brings about testimony? Faith. What brings about faith? Now, I can read, Jesus went about doing good. He said, wow, Lord, I want to be going about doing good. I want to be going about doing good. And the Lord says, go, I have sent you. And I go, and I begin to heal the sick. And I'm getting results. People are getting healed. People are getting healed. People are getting healed. And now, sickness comes to my body. I don't know what to do. And then, I, I, I call, call, brother, so and so and call. Let them come and lay hands on me so that I will be healed. Huh? And, 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 and so on, people preach that. He said, see, as a minister, you need other people to minister to you. As wonderful as that sounds, it's good actually. But you see, that's not the perfect truth. What is going to keep you well and alive is not other people laying hands on you. It's what you know about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The fact that you're a preacher doesn't mean you know him. You will only know him when he reveals himself to you. How does he reveal himself to you? It's not, oh God, visit me. I want to see a vision of Jesus Christ tonight. Oh God, visit me. No. He reveals himself in his word. What do I mean by that? He will speak to you. You will hear his voice. So you go before him and say, Lord, I don't understand. Why is this sickness in my body? Dear Jesus, it's not consistent with you. I know it's not consistent with you. So something must be wrong somewhere. I must be getting this thing wrong. So what, 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 what's going on, Lord? Holy Spirit, I ask now for wisdom. You no, know, James said, if, if, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask from God. So I, I ask for wisdom now on how to deal with this sickness situation. I ask for your wisdom. And then what happens? Jesus himself, he says, ask and you shall receive. He said, you asked for wisdom concerning this. Here is it. Do this, do this, do this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the moment he tells you what to do, you get up and do it. <laughs> Praise God. And healing comes automatically. Listen, this is how we stay alive and wait for his coming i'm telling you the truth this is how death will be defeated in us how because we hear his voice and we know he brings life and his word gives life so we don't let death come out of our mouth rather we speak life as his word comes to us and not the word he told us 10 years ago yes we remember he told us 10 years ago and then we say lord thank you you know something you just worship god for the things he has said to you a worship session father i just bless you you remember 10 years ago lord you visited me and you told me this truth lord you remember i was in that room that single room apartment and, and, and I was so blessed wow Lord and, and it has kept me all this while and then you go and say Lord I remember I remember five years ago Lord I was on a journey and you shared this thing with me Lord you know that has kept me oh Lord concerning my finances this is I'm telling you when you praise God like that you know what's going to happen God's going to visit you again say son you know I told you this say yes now let me teach you something further you see, oh, I thought I knew it. I thought I knew it. Wow. Oh, that's how it works. Praise God. Lift up your hands right now and just, just bless the name of the Lord. Even for his word that is coming to you right now. Father, we bless you. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you. We are running to win the prize. And we put our bodies under. We will not be a castaway after preaching. But we will obtain the prize, even from you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, if you're sick in your body right now, get up and do what you couldn't do before. I declare you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you until Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.